so I'm back with another episode that shines light on the links between Common Core and the gaming industry. If you haven't seen the previous five segments, I would highly suggest it, but they aren't necessary for today's viewing. Ready? Let's dive in and see how some of the individuals who were the most responsible for initially starting Gamergate are related to Common Core. Of course, the first focus here is going to be the Game Journal Pro List. If up to this point you think that the connections and evidence that I've provided are spurious at best, this information that I'm about to dump on you will feel like the ice water challenge. First, a little background. Soon after the initial rush of the 12 articles that were basically homogenous in language and content, which were claiming that the gamer identity was dead and should no longer be catered to by the gaming industry, it was leaked that there was actually a collusionary underbelly to the game's journalism industry. And it went far deeper than just being in bed with the AAA studios. As Gamergate.me describes it, Game Journal Pros is a now defunct Google group consisting of 150 writers, bloggers, and editors from various game news sites and tech media outlets. The mailing list, group members, and various leaked email conversations have sparked online discussion in the video game community's ongoing Gamergate controversy. The group was directly inspired by journalists, according to its creator, Ars Technica senior editor Kyle Orland. The existence of Game Journal Pros and its leaked email conversations play a major part in the case made by Gamergate that the game media industry is guilty of collusion, corruption, and attempted censorship. So what we get out of this? In the most basic terms, the revelations of indiscretions of an absolute nobody indie game developer with games journalists is what kindled the fire. And the simultaneous barrage of the Gamers Are Dead articles put some logs on for sure, but it was the leak which revealed the collusionary cabal of games journalists that poured an entire tank of gasoline onto the flames. The Zoe scandal, originally dubbed the Quinn Spiracy, would have died out, albeit slowly, if it was simply left to its own devices. But then they went all in with the Gamers Are Dead articles, which was the true catalyzing event. Those articles, of course, were architected by the Game Journal Pro list. So who was this creator of the list, Kyle Orland, and what is his ties to the political and educational world? Well, it was already said that Kyle is the senior editor for Ars Technica, but what's strange is that it just so happens that Kyle's father, Martin Orland, is extremely influential in the educational industry and has very powerful political connections. Let's just read through his introduction from his own company's website, WestEd. A key national figure in developing evidence-based knowledge for educators, Martin Orland serves as a senior program director for evaluation and policy research at WestEd, as well as director of Mid-Atlantic Comprehensive Center for the U.S. Department of Education. Orland directs a nationwide staff of methodologists, research scientists, content experts, evaluators, and technical assistance providers whose goal is to help address critical needs in the fields of education and human development. Prior to joining WestEd, Orland served as the Director of Center for Education at the National Research Council, part of the National Academies. He also held senior leadership positions in the U.S. Department of Education at the Institution of Education Sciences, the National Center for Education Statistics, and the National Educational Goals Panel. There, his work included a number of high-profile projects. Orland has authored a number of publications for academic journals and government, and is regularly presented at international, national, and regional conferences. He is the past president of the Association for Education, Finance, and Policy, and currently serves on the editorial board for the Journal of Education, Finance, and Policy. So. Let me get this straight. The father of the creator and leader of the Games Journal Pro List, the list that engineered the Gamers Are Dead campaign, just happens to be the senior program director of an extremely powerful educational reform organization, as well as being employed by the literal Department of Education in a very powerful position as well, and of course, has a long past of holding other powerful positions within that Department of Education. What's more interesting, according to Education Week, when Mr. Orland was working as a senior program director for the Washington-based Center for Education at the National Academies, he was actually working for the Division of Behavioral and Social Science in Education. So he was actually in charge of the educational division relating specifically to behavioral and social sciences. 
considering that the whole premise of this documentary has been that Common Core is a subversive tool of indoctrination meant to alter the behavior of all future generations, which in turn will drastically change the social and cultural landscape. This should raise an eyebrow on anyone who is even remotely awake. But of course, the rabbit hole does not stop here. Maybe we could see if there are any direct connections between the Gates Foundation and Mr. Orland's organization. Oh, snap! It turns out that when Orland became the director at West Ed in 2007, that's when the grants from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation started pouring in. From 2007 until July 2014, they received $2,987,668. But what's really interesting is on August 27th, the day before the Gamers Are Dead articles came out, they got a grant, a single grant, for $3.45 million, larger than all the previous grants combined. And what What's even stranger, that grant in specific wasn't discovered until by me today, even though all the previous ones were discovered months ago, because it was mysteriously miscategorized so that it doesn't show up when searching the US like all the other ones do. Hmm. It's almost as if they didn't want us to find it. And while we don't have quite all the details yet on whether the group's initial persuasion to advance this agenda was engineered by Kyle and his father alone, or whether the group was expressly and knowingly implicit, it's clear that there is something very fishy going on here. My personal theory is that Kyle was on orders from his father to start the Games Journal Pro List with the explicit intent of killing the gamer stereotype to usher in the coming wave of gamified educational machinations. Now, let's look at the other individual involved with the initial Gamergate blow up. Zoe Quinn. Her aunt is Michelle Quinn. Turns out she's an assistant principal at the St. Cloud Preparatory Academy which is a Florida K-8 through school which is currently embattled in a huge push for Common Core. Her personal Pinterest page is littered with Common Core coursework. Realistically though, her aunt's affiliation is probably just a coincidence, but it's worth mentioning, at least in passing. We might find some more on her in the future. Next topic, the political might of the Gates Foundation. Immediately upon completion of the last segment of this series, Slashdot coincidentally released an article which directly ties in with everything that's been covered and gives a totally new perspective at the situation on hand. Let's take a look. It reads, The New York Times' Eric Lipton was just awarded a 2015 Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting that shed light on how foreign powers buy influence at think tanks. So it probably bears mentioning that Microsoft's two-pronged national talent strategy to increase K-12 computer science education and the number of H-1B visas, which is on the verge of being codified into laws, was hatched at an influential Microsoft and Gates Foundation-backed think tank mentioned in Lipton's reporting. The Brookings Institute. In 2012, the Center for Technology Innovation at Brookings hosted a forum on STEM education and immigration reforms, where fabricating a crisis was discussed as a strategy to succeed with Microsoft's agenda after earlier lobbying attempts by Gates and Microsoft had failed. So Brad, Microsoft General Counsel Brad Smith, asked the Brookings Institute Daryl West at the event, you're the only one who mentioned this topic of making the problem bigger, so we galvanize action by really producing a crisis, I take it? Yeah, Smith replied. And with the help of nonprofit organizations like Code.org and FWD.us that were founded shortly thereafter, a national K-12 computer science and tech immigration crisis was indeed created. Hmm, producing a crisis. Hmm. So, they are known to have fabricated a national K-12 computer science and immigration crisis solely and specifically to advance Gates' agenda. But have we seen any fabricated crises in relation to the games industry lately? Well, just so happens that anyone who's been following Gamergate knows that for the last three or so years, the major tech sites affiliated with the Games Journal Pro List have fabricated a crisis of their own. The crisis saying that there's no diversity in gaming. They claim that all gamers are not only straight white men, but violent, vitriolic, and hateful, racist, sexist, homophobic, and especially misogynistic. This is anything but the truth, as we all know. 
but the journalists involved either on the orders of a gates back think tank or via subversion and manipulation through Kyle Orland and his father were used to fabricate this gamer diversity crisis whole cloth with the sole purpose of destroying the gamer identity and stereotype in order to sell both investors and lawmakers on gamified education as the way of the future. Furthermore, the last sentence of the Slashdot article states that they expressly used nonprofit organizations to promote the crisis. Sound familiar? The nonprofits like Feminist Frequency have been used in this exact same way. And furthermore, the timelines exactly matched up if they hatched both of these fabricated crises at the same point in time. For instance, the article stated that the computer science crisis was initially created in 2012 and then they created some nonprofit organizations to really promote the crisis to the public arena. So did we see any organizations that popped up in the last couple years that are promoting this fake diversity crisis in gaming? I could think of one. So here is the precise method that was used in both fabricated crises that we have mentioned thus far. One. An initial lobbying effort must fail. 2. A fake crisis is then made up that can be used to subvert the lawmaker's view on the topic at hand. 3. Non-profit organizations are then used to introduce the fake crisis into the public arena. Journalists that are in the bag then promote the non-profit's bullshit until it is bashed into your brain that there is indeed a serious crisis going on. And we have seen these exact steps play out both in regards to computer science and the gamification of the educational system, and in the exact same order. Well, that's it for this episode, but in the next one, we're going to take a far deeper and more detailed look at the Brookings Institution, as well as a bunch of other connections and crazy stuff. This rabbit hole does not stop, and this train has no brakes, so subscribe and stay tuned.